Tomorrow we cross into Peru. Back in the rhythm of the road, the team have plenty of time to reflect on the lessons of the past week. Yeah, last week was really a life-changing experience. I was sitting there about thinking about the consequences, you know, like friendship and such. But everyone was really, really supportive. You know, that's 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 real team spirit, that's real friendship that, that people can forgive you for that kind of stuff. And I think I can learn a big, big lesson from that. Also, you know, just being that little bit more careful, I think, is very important. Thinking about something twice before you before you before you're stupid. It's probably a good idea. Yeah, three of us decided um, enough was enough in Quito and um, that we wouldn't drink until we got to the next capital city <laughs> where we did our next press day, which is Lima. But this time we're going to drink after the press event and not before the press event. The first overnight in Peru is in Piura. Here, one of the Racing Green sponsors also supports an educational charity, AIMI. It's a chance to turn off the Pan American Highway for a guided tour of a Peruvian village in the company of some volunteers. Oh, we come for four days a week. We teach Tuesday through Friday. And occasionally, if there's a special activity or we want to visit something, we'll come on a Saturday. We're just about to open up the library for an hour or so of playtime. The kids are always really excited to go in, uh, play with the games, and read the books we got. No, I can't believe it. They're so friendly, they're helping me all the time. You know, normally you would have like, everyone is really competitive, but here, they're like helping each other and helping me as well. Like, otherwise, I'd be lost against them. Yeah? Amy, hace ocho años que empezó en esta comunidad a trabajar en primer lugar con nuestros niños de la de la escuela y así pudo comenzar Amy año tras venían voluntarios de diferentes países y podían venir a enseñarle a nuestros niños el idioma inglés. I think this guy, Man United, Alex Ferguson, if you're watching. This one in the grey top, he's got some skills. Back heel, step overs. He's good. Hey, Ronaldo, eh? He doesn't know Ronaldo. So far, on the way down, Pan American, we haven't really stopped to, to um, visit these kind of things on the way down, even though there's a lot of poverty in the Latin American countries. And this is the first time we've done it. I think it was a very valuable thing to do, to actually get the experience and, and see what it's like. As high-tech engineers, they are also given a reminder of how simple technology can have a big impact on quality of life. Y esta cocina es muy importante porque ahí ya el humo sale para arriba en la chimenea. Sí, ahí le pone todo el material. Por ejemplo, solamente oro en mano son 40 soles para lo que lo construye. First time visited such poverty. And it's quite amazing actually the way people live and the, the opportunities that they don't have that we do have. Yeah, it's amazing to, to see something like this. It's got to be seen, really, just to realize how other people are living in the world. It was so worth coming here. Like it's, it's just an experience that, like, I've never had in my life before, and it's, it's pretty incredible. It's, here, it seems the kids, you know, um, they're just really happy with what they have, grateful for what they have, and that's that's something really to take away. It's amazing how how happy they are, and just like <laughs> yeah, just being happy with with nothing. We gotta go. Hey, bye bye. Since the border from Peru, it's been desert, desert, desert all the way, just sand, sand, sand. And I think this is going to continue all the way, possibly down to Santiago. We even go through the driest place in the world, the Atacama Desert. 
So it's going to get drier still, more sandy. Really amazing to see how diverse the world is. The Pan American Highway hugs Peru's coast for the length of the country. With smooth, fast tarmac, it will only take six driving days to reach the Chilean border. But first, they have to survive the traffic in Lima. Actually, hit rush hour. So busy. Basically, this lorry has just um, gone into the rear left of the Echo Zero. The bodywork has just screwed that off, just haven't repaired it, but I don't know how bad the damage is. Let's just hope it hasn't damaged. It's not that damaged and nobody's injured. Um, so, what we need is uh, another fiberglass guy. After the last because I was absolutely shocked, but it seems to get like, you know, nothing, nothing shocks you anymore. It's like absolute crazy traffic around. Tomorrow, the team have a press conference booked, but by now, they know how to get things done the South American way. We've been able to get hold of a fiberglass magician. Once again, it is really good to have someone come at such short notice and do some fiber work magic on the car and, and get the damage fixed for tomorrow with the press event here. So um, it's really obviously the priority now. It's all in a day, we had it completely fixed and looking almost as good as new. This time there's no time lost and the following day they're back on the road. But now they've got a more serious problem. Since leaving Quito, the SR0 has been chewing up battery power faster than it should, and they can't figure out why. Um, we're missing some range now for some reason. We've got to find out. So we have some long legs ahead, and we don't want to be stranded in the middle of the desert um, trying to get a charge from some sand dunes. So uh, we've really got to make sure we fix it. The first stop south of Lima is Ica, which turns out to be the perfect place to tackle the problem. We're at the uh, Ica car testing facility here, which is a fantastic place where we can charge the car and do an inspection on it as well because you can actually get under the car and see everything in really good detail. Um, and this is uh, one of the racing industry contacts that we sort of got into through Sebastian originally and I sort of filtered our way through it then. In general, it's actually still pretty good condition, but uh, there are problems, namely this hole straight through the base plate. I drove over a stone and it just cut straight through. Still haven't found the problem why the car is consuming more energy than it should do. Uh, now yeah, we're just starting to basically take everything apart and have a proper look. It's going to be a long evening, possibly a long night. Sincerely hope it's, it's nothing serious. Oh dear. But tonight we'll tell. For sure. Could be something maybe abnormally in the battery pack. All oh, good. Oh, old ghosts are returning. If it doesn't work with this one, then we can try with the old one again and see if that works. Because it's such a mystery, it's trial and error, we don't know, never really. Where, where's the box? The hotel is damn nice. As a mechanical engineer especially, there, there's some subtleties in electrics that maybe we just don't understand or we're not used to looking for, or it's just magic. Six hours of debugging the battery management system and they're still none the wiser. Right now, it's you know, the end of the night when things are looking bleak. Guess what? It's not going to work anymore. I just need to sleep. Like, I've had enough. 
there's always tomorrow. To see more, go to racinggreenendurance.com. changes every second. 